Raise your hand if you've ever wondered why gravy makes everything taste better. Today, we're unlocking the delicious mysteries and centuries-old traditions behind this overlooked sauce. From country sausage gravy to brown gravy ladled over mashed potatoes, it's not only a food enhancer, it's a comfort food that has a richer history than you might realize. You see, back in the day before the 16th century, gravy was a simple concoction just the natural juices that oozed out while roasting meat. Gravy likely became a thing out of necessity. While meat roasted, juices oozed, and in those early centuries, you would covet every morsel and drop that came from cooking food. So it's no surprise that drippings were saved and enjoyed basted over the roasted meat or used as a dipping sauce. Fast forward to the 18th century, and thanks to those culinary maestros, the French chefs, our definition of gravy got a serious upgrade. Now, it's not just about meat drippings. We're talking about carefully adding meat stocks, wines, herbs, thickeners, and fats, all joining the gravy boat. It's these thickeners that gave gravy its modern-day consistency and flavor. In the culinary practices of rural communities during this era, it became a common practice in both England and early America to add some form of a roux, which is flour and fat to the gravy to thicken it up. Gravy became a rather fast food because of its simple method and its caloric content making it hearty. It was served in dishes at breakfast and supper. One writing from a Philadelphia publication in 1885 from The Cooker As It Should Be noted, out your chops when cooked, keep a large spoonful of fat in which they were cooked in the pan, dredge in as much flour as will make it a paste, rub this well together over the fire until a light brown, then pour in as much boiling water as will reduce to the thickness of a cream, and add a tablespoonful of mushroom catsup and a little salt. Let this simmer five minutes and pour it through a sieve over the steak. Crafting the perfect gravy is a form of alchemy, marrying art, science, and a bit of wishful thinking. It requires a generous dose of patience and methodical stirring. In her 1966 book, The Art of Making Sauces and Gravies, food consultant Frederica L. Boehner shares valuable insights to ensure your gravy game is on point. According to her, mastering good gravy is all about understanding a handful of key ingredients and employing simple techniques. Baynard underscores the significance of precise measurements when it comes to assessing fat and starch content. In this context, starch refers to flour, though it can also encompass other ingredients such as cornstarch and even white bread, a topic we'll delve into in a future episode all about bread gravy. Too much fat can turn your gravy greasy and prone to separation, while an abundance of flour results in a thick, pasty, and often lumpy texture. Her golden rule? Equal amounts of starch and fat for that perfect balance. For optimal flavor, Baynard recommends a two-minute boil, underscoring that prolonged boiling breaks down starch, leading to a thinner gravy. But fear not, because if things take a wrong turn, our culinary guide has some tricks up her sleeve. To remedy lumps, Baynard suggests straining them out. If your gravy veers into greasy territory, a quick fix involves skimming off the excess grease using a piece of paper towel or even an ice cube wrapped in cheesecloth. The desire for convenience quickly spurred the creation of commercial products that mimic homemade recipes. Enter pre-thickened gravies, available in cans, jars, and even powder that you can reconstitute with boiling water. In the United States, the term has evolved to encompass various homemade sauces, ranging from the classic giblet gravy paired with Thanksgiving turkey to the tomato sauce crafted by Italian-Americans for pasta dishes. This broad usage in America has extended to advertising, where the term gravy is often employed to suggest that a commercial product can replicate the authentic homemade taste. Yet, amidst these changes, one fundamental aspect remains constant. Genuine homemade gravies always retain the essential juices of the main ingredient. Whether it's the pan drippings from a savory pork chop or the luscious juice extracted from a ripe tomato. If you need a quick commercial gravy, Heinz is a classic American choice. But if you'd like to try your hand at an age-old gravy recipe, 
click the link in the description for the perfect Christmas make-ahead gravy. Yep, that's right. Make it ahead of time and save it in the freezer so you always have delicious historic gravy the next time you need to amp up your dish. Well, there you have it, the history of gravy. Thanks for watching, and as always, my friends, stay saucy.